and I'm going to be doing my creative arts exploration project on Georgia O'Keeffe. The painting that I decided to do of hers is the cow skull with calico roses. So first off, a little history um, of who is Georgia O'Keeffe. It's a pretty famous name. Um, I, for one, know this as a household name. Um, so just some background information. She was born on November 15th, 1887 in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. She was well known for being one of the most influential artists in modernism era of art. And I will be going over what actually modernism is and some aspects of that in the future slides. So she actually attended the Art Institute of Chicago and then moved on to the Art Student League in New York City um, to continue her education. And I thought this was an important fact to um, put into this slideshow just because the Art Institute of Chicago is so close to us and I think it's something that is cool to know that a really famous, influential person and woman in art was literally in our backyard. So later in life, she had moved to Santa Fe, New Mexico, where she lived the rest of her life. And she was also married. Um, she was married to her husband for a really long time. I don't touch on him um, at all in this presentation just because he had doubts in her artwork and she, he was not very supportive. Um, but so she lived kind of all over the place, but she did live with him for a period of her life. And there's currently a museum dedicated to her and her artwork um, in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So some popular paintings that she has done. Um, Jimson Weed is going to be the first picture that you see here um, with the white flowers. Um, and then the black iris, which is going to be the darker colored painting um, right below that. And then the gray line with black, blue, and yellow is going to be the um, painting that is right below that. And these are all famous paintings of hers, which are displayed all over the world. And so some achievements and recognition for Georgia. Um, she was elected into the American Academy of Arts and Letters in 1963. She was elected into the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 1966. She was awarded the Edward McDowell Medal in 1972. She was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which is a very prestigious award. Um, this award is awarded to an individual who represents basically the entire country and is a very prestigious individual. So she was awarded that by President Ford in 1977. And then the National Medal of Arts, she was awarded by President Reagan in 1985. And then towards the end of her life um, and the end of her kind of her rediscovering women in this art, um, she was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in 1993. So what actually is modernism? So modernism um, took place in the early 20th century um, and it was in the 19th and 20th centuries and it included abstract art, pop art, millennialism, and dadaism. Um, it basically rejected traditional values and techniques of classical art. So they wanted to break through this new time period um, where a lot was changing with industrial scene and technology and artwork is changing and everything was changing in the arts. So they wanted that to be represented in their artwork as well. It emphasized the importance of individualistic art. So they wanted art to not just be um, based on what other people wanted to see, um, based on what the individual wanted to paint and what they saw through their eyes. 
Um, and it showed how society has changed through artwork. So like I said before, society had changed tremendously with technology advances and industrializing cities and all those that kind of things. So that needed to be changed in the art form as well. Um, so this is something that Georgia was really focused on and she really wanted to explore the fact that she was a woman in this new era of art and it was important for her to make her name a household name and also um a little fun fact about her she never signed any of her paintings um she just kind of wanted people to know the artwork and know that it was by her so she really wanted her name to be out there and she wanted to be known for this type of art which i thought was really cool so this is the actual painting that I'm going to be focusing on in this presentation. Um, this is called, again, like I said at the beginning, Cow Skull with Calico Roses. I think this is just an absolute beautiful painting um, with a lot of dimension to it. So let's get into that. So some history behind the actual painting. Um, it was based off of an actual cow skull found in New Mexico during a drought. Um... She had shipped pieces of the actual bones of the cow back to New York, where then a year later, um, because it took that long for things to get transported, she was able to paint it in another painting, which is one of her other famous paintings. Calico roses are actually used for graves in New Mexico, so she included them onto the skull um, to represent mortality and life after death. Um, so that was really cool that those were incorporated into her piece. And then also the drought that New Mexico um, went through during this time period left many bones surrounding her home and her workspace in New Mexico. So it gave her a lot of different ideas for her paintings and what she wanted to do next. And this also like raised a lot of questions about life and death and mortality mortality and what happens after death and how we can make this awful thing of death how we can make that beautiful into her artwork so just some personal observations that I have so the actual type of artwork was oil on a canvas painting the mood for me um, came off as peaceful and tranquility with the light colors um, the only dark piece to this painting, I feel like, is the actual skull because that can be a little bit confusing. We don't know why it's there. It's a little bit darker. So for the line work, I really didn't find that there was any direct line work. Um, the painting is representational and it is two-dimensional. It almost looks a little three-dimensional, but when you're actually looking at the painting and comparing it to 3D paintings... Um, it is two-dimensional. So for the form, it is a balanced composition. Um, the crack in the skull signifies the middle of the painting, which I will just go back and if I'm able to show you guys. So it is just straight down the middle of the painting. Um, so this is going to be really centered and real idealistic for what she is going for. So the colors are going to be gray, cream, white, and a dark brown. Um, and a little bit of yellow in there as well in the cracked parts of the skull. The space, this is going to be a linear perspective. And the style, um, it is minimalistic and it involves nature, um, which we can relate back to modernism. Um, how it incorporates nature and flowers and the actual skull of an animal. And it's minimalistic because it does not have a lot of aspects to this piece. Um, it focuses on such a important um, skull and it has those intricate flowers, but it is very minimalistic because there's not a lot happening in the actual painting. And this, um, the location of this painting, um, it's actually pretty cool as well. It's in the Art Institute of Chicago, so it is in our back door. I would love to go see this painting in person. 
um, but it's really cool that it's so close. And then last, why I chose this painting. So when I first looked at this painting, I thought the aesthetic to it really drew my attention. I thought that it was a very, very cool print. And I was curious to know how the roses related back to the skull and why they were there because you have a skull of a cow and then also wrote like how does that relate back to each other because it's not two things that you would normally see together so learning the backstory of why she did what she did was very interesting to me and I also wanted to know the story behind the skull and why she painted that. I think a lot of times we might see a skull and that's kind of like a dark, like I said, the mood um, before I did my research was a little bit dark and a little bit morbid. But knowing why she painted what she did and had the impact that this painting had on modernism was very cool for me to find out. And last but not least... I had heard of Georgia O'Keeffe Museum in um, the TV series Breaking Bad, which actually does take place in New Mexico. And they do mention her in an episode in the museum and a couple of her paintings, um, which I thought was really cool that they incorporated that type of artwork and the impact that she has had on modern society into such an influential and popular TV show. So I really hope that you enjoyed my presentation and I really hope that this informed you about Georgia O'Keeffe if you don't already know who she is and thanks for listening.